Dr. Smith, are you are you ready to go? I am. All right. Well, um, then it gives me pleasure to introduce our last speaker of, of today. Cody Smith comes to us from Missouri State University. Thanks, Cody. All right. Thank you, Caleb. And thanks, everybody, for hanging around to, to talk with me about investigating relationships between TA self-efficacy and teaching approach. So these two variables have become interesting to me through some previous work that I've done looking at self-efficacy of TAs, um, kind of as a proxy for those that don't have much development experience or ability to go through some sort of TA uh, PD. So we know that TAs have a large responsibility that they're teaching a lot of labs, they're teaching a lot of lectures, uh, giving supplemental instruction with very little or no development. So um, what do they have to rely on then? It's mostly their observation of how they're being taught. So the two variables in this study and, and ones that I've become more interested in are uh, self-efficacy just for teaching. So you could say teaching self-efficacy as well and how that impacts teaching performance in the absence of any development or in the absence of um, maybe any acquired skill for teaching. And then also teaching approach, which can be subdivided uh, perhaps into a teaching centered approach versus a student centered approach. So whether someone just is presenting, maybe asking questions, correcting answers to questions and moving through um, a, a lecture in that way, or whether they are giving more cooperative experiences, more discussion based, uh, teaching, um, and then constructing knowledge that students bring into the classroom. So looking at these two variables between or among TAs has become interesting. As my previous research, I've looked at self-efficacy and what goes into that, how TAs develop their self-efficacy, and we'll see in a little bit some variables that might play into that as well. So my overall research question for this study was just what is the relationship between TA self-efficacy and teaching approach? And then also I wanted to look at some differences among those that are maybe higher and lower in their self-efficacy or who fit more in the student versus teacher-centered approaches. So the main study design was quantitative. I did a, or sent out an online survey uh, nationally, just use networks, use Biotap. Maybe some of you shared this and thank you for doing so. Um, but just an online survey of these two variables. So I measured self-efficacy using the graduate teaching assistant teacher self-efficacy scale. And I measured um, teaching approach using the approach to teaching inventory. So these are both uh, five point scaled um, surveys. The graduate or the GTA TSCS basically measures overall teaching self-efficacy. So it asks um, respondents to consider a prompt and then say, how confident are you on a scale of one to five? The ATI is also on a five point scale and it actually subdivides respondents into subcategories of um, a teaching centered or teaching focused approach versus a student focused approach so that they basically have two scores for that one survey. So for this study, I looked at uh, Pearson correlation coefficient to compare these two variables overall, see if there's any relationship, um, as well as looking at some um, demographic variables and any relationship or comparisons among those with these variables, uh, which I'll talk more about experience of TAs as I go through this presentation. And then I also use paired sample t-test to see um, if there was a difference among this sample of teaching-centered versus student-centered, was there a significant difference for those that are more or less um, teacher or student-centered in their approach? So looking at demographics, the average age of the participants was 28 years. Um, and the, the gender was mostly female, uh, almost two-thirds, about a third male and then a handful of folks who didn't fit into the binary categories. Then we had race, ethnicity. Um, so the majority white, 58%, but a good mix of the three following categories of Asian, Pacific Islander, Black, African-American, and Hispanic or Latinx. But then again, a handful of people who 
didn't fit into just one category, but were perhaps multi-racial, multi-ethnic, or biracial. And then I also measured teaching experience by semester. So not many people had none or no experience, but you can see the different percentages of those who had either one to two semesters, three to four, five to six, or greater than six. So a lot of people in that one to two range, um, a bit less than three to four, but then it comes back up as you get above six semesters, which was, I thought, kind of interesting. So I categorized this um, demographic variable into two main categories, those who are less experienced, being um, not experienced at all, up to two semesters, or those who are more experienced or having three or more semesters of teaching experience as a TA. And I'll talk about those two categories of this variable a little bit later, but just to kind of round out the rest of the demographics, um, you can see I, I measured their education. So most of them were master's students, a good percentage of them doctoral students, maybe a few postdocs. Uh, most of these people were at major research institutions, but quite a few were at master's granting institutions. Uh, their teaching role was primarily lab instructor or primary lecturer. So they were the ones at the head of these classes, leading them um, every week. And then their course level, you can see that the majority of them were undergrad with even most of those being those uh, lower level freshman, sophomore classes. So very introductory and important classes that they were teaching. Um, and then course modality, the vast majority were seated in person with a good handful of them uh, in hybrid or online settings. So I give you all those demographics just to kind of situate this uh, study into what the sample looked like. But going on to the results, um, I'll kind of talk through, I have three slides that look a lot like this. So you'll see an overall slide, a less experienced slide, and then a more experienced slide. So at the bottom, you can see the N for the total study was 127 uh, participants. Their mean self-efficacy score was a 4.37 out of five, so they were pretty confident. And you can see that their mean teacher-centered versus student-centered approaches uh, differed significantly so that they were more student-centered than they were teacher-centered by quite a bit. So with these graphs that you see, on the x-axis is their self-efficacy, on the y is their teaching approach. The graph on the left shows the relationship between self-efficacy and teacher-centered approaches, whereas the right shows student-centered approaches. And as you can see, there's a positive relationship between self-efficacy and both approaches overall. So perhaps confidence didn't have much of an impact on approach if there was a positive relationship between both. For less experienced, um, you can see the data at the bottom, still pretty confident, still a different skewing in the favor of student-centered, and a positive relationship between self-efficacy and both approaches. So again, with less experienced and overall, still not very telling of an interaction because really both of them show a positive interaction. Then whenever we get to more experienced, we see a little bit of a difference. So the self-efficacy is pretty much the same for both groups, less experienced, more experienced. Um, they both have more student-centered than teacher-centered tendencies in their approach. But we see here with more experience that on the left, uh, the relationship is non-existent between, uh, or at least statistically non-existent between self-efficacy and teacher-centered approaches. But there is a positive relationship between self-efficacy and student-centered approaches. So what does this mean or what are my takeaways or conclusions from this? Um, I think that based on these res results that perhaps more experienced TAs who are high in confidence may just have a greater understanding or are better to ref able to reflect upon um, what positively impacts their students' learning and again, based on their experiences of what has worked or what hasn't worked perhaps in the past. So they're perhaps more aware of what their students' needs are in the classroom. And so they're able to better leverage that experience that they've had to utilize the understanding of students' needs to then be more student-centered and have that positive relationship with their confidence. 
Whereas less experienced TAs, we did see a positive relationship with their confidence, but we also saw a positive relationship um, with confidence and teacher-centered approaches as well. So perhaps not a clear interaction between these two variables um, as they reported high confidence with both. So maybe there's this experience threshold that might need to be reached for TAs to be able to utilize their reported uh, confidence and their reported teaching approach and how that might impact or play out in their classrooms when they're actually teaching their students. So the future direction that I would like to go with this is just to use more of a qualitative exploration around these relationships. Um, in doing so, I would, and I, I've started actually using a teaching beliefs interview to kind of get an understanding more qualitatively of what goes into these TAs uh, teaching approaches, whether they're student-centered or teacher-centered, and does their reporting actually play out in these interviews the same way that they're reporting it on the scale? And then also looking at teaching observations, so getting in the classrooms and kind of seeing, does their reported teaching approach play out in practice of how they're actually leading their classrooms and see if there's any uh, differences in those between those who are um, reported to be more student-centered versus more teacher-centered, and those who are more experienced versus less experienced. So my main takeaway, I guess, would be to, um, for professional development opportunities, or if there's no opportunity for professional development, but you want to help a TA along, is to just really give them more experience before they can get in the classroom. I think that that can leverage a lot of their um, kind of, tangential learning around what is a good practice in teaching, get experience, get feedback, and that in, in turn with their confidence, because we saw those who are high and less or, or more and less experienced still were pretty confident, but maybe more experienced TAs have a more realistic view um, of what confidence actually means in terms of translating into their classrooms. So with that, I will um, turn it over to questions, comments, um, any suggestions for, for future study. Again, I've got uh, quite a bit of uh, more data to look through, but I haven't started analyzing all those other demographic variables yet. Um, so I've just mainly looked at experience so far. But um, thank you for, for listening and happy to have a, a chat about this. That's great. Thank you, Cody. Thank you. Um, yes, we have time for questions, so drop those in the chat or unmute yourself and, and ask away. But I was going to ask your teaching belief interviews that you're going to do, or is that something that you've pulled from, or have you pulled those questions from the literature? Is that something you're developing yourself? Yeah, it's something that I pulled from the literature. It's the teaching belief. I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it is something that is it is um, in the literature already. It's just like a seven questions, I think, kind of about they're just thoughts on teaching in general. So I've had a couple of those already with um, some participants from this semester and they've ultimately gone pretty well. It gets them talking quite a bit and thinking about why they're doing what they're doing in their classrooms. Cool, thank you. Yeah. I guess I'll just riff off of that really quickly because one of the things I'm always kind of wondering about is how much of, of the gains that we may see or document in individual studies how much of that is the result of just teaching experience and how much of it is the result of the teaching professional development and maybe interactions between those things? Is that an avenue that maybe you're looking at exploring in, in some of the more qualitative approaches or, or just any of your other future work? Yeah, and I've, I've looked at it in the past, some of my past work too, of when interviewing people, asking them, have you had any sort of development and what was that like? And so in my experience, experience with TAs and just talking with them, the, the ones that I happen to have talked to, there hasn't been a lot of substantial development opportunity for them. And so the confidence is more about um, or coming from a perspective of I've done this before. Um, I do have experience doing it. Um, and therefore, I think that I can do it or, you know, someone else has done it and I've watched that and I think that I'm equal to them. So um, perhaps I'm confident in doing it there. Whereas those who are less confident um, and less experienced, really they're still showing confidence, but it's more of like, 
you know, I'm confident because my students look like they are having a good time in class or they look like that they enjoy, you know, what I'm doing in class if, if that's the case. But it's not really based on any sort of indicators of student learning, which has been kind of an interesting separation between those who are more experienced and can identify those things or less experienced. And I just think it's a, a fun or it's a positive learning environment, but they don't really know necessarily what contributes to a positive learning environment. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you, Cody. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Um, and again, if questions come up, please um, feel free to contact the speakers. I'm sure they're more than happy to, well, I know they're more than happy to address any questions that come up post, post their presentation and post-conference as well.